And let me tell you about my world-famous guest, the one and only Kimberly Dvorak, a war responsible for foreign policy. Uh, she is also a TV correspondent, CW6 News San Diego, and One America News Network. Her website is The KD Report, streaming at Periscope.com and Facebook, the one and only Miss Dvorak. How are you? How are you? I'm fine. How are you doing, Chuck? I'm doing okay. Uh, I'll tell you what, we're going to talk about uh, Kumo here. Yeah. Uh, Como, Kumo, and his big cover up going on. And also, uh, if we have time, it uh, seems like uh, Mr. Biden is forgetting <laughs> An awful lot. His, his campaign promises. Defunding yeah. the police? Uh, no, we're not going to do that. Uh, how about getting rid of those school loan debts? No, nope, we're not going to do that. Uh, and he did that, I guess, uh, last evening on uh, CNN. Yeah. So, I don't know. You think it's kicking in or you think somebody's saying, hey, your, your stuff is just crazy? Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I, I, I think that um, the president is kind of, you know, he's not a prime time in front of the camera, great presence type of person. And, you know, as most people notice during the campaign, you know, he just, you know, he did things that didn't make any sense. And so now I think that when he goes out and he does some of these public speeches, I mean, clearly he's doing exactly what uh, former President Barack Obama did in everything is teleprompter. And if they get questions, they arrange for the questions with the media beforehand so they can put them in the teleprompter so he can read the answers. That's the kind of the president, that's how he's handling this. You know, I don't want to say that when you, you, know, you get older, you start losing some of your faculties. I think in his case, he does, and he has, I mean, he's supposed to be the president of the free world here, and and listening to him bumble along, it just, you know, I, I just think it makes China and Russia and whatever enemies we have just, like, grateful that he's president. Yeah, you know, and Abe Lincoln told me he was scared of being on TV, so. Yeah, I well, yeah, because you can't take that back. You and I know, like, as we're talking yeah. here, once those words leave yeah. your mouth, they're not coming back, so. Yeah. Hey, and by the way, I'm, I'm sure you heard that uh, Rush Limbaugh yeah. passed away today. Yeah, so um, sad. All right. So, you know, uh, let's get into this uh, Kumo thing. You know, this guy, uh, you know, some people, they just they just come across like, hey, you know, uh, I am so much better than you. Yeah. I know so much more than you do. You know, and, and I mean, it's just unbelievable when you let your ego get out of that much control. And this guy, yeah. what I really hate about him, Kimberly, is he reminds me of a lot of people that have to use their one hand to punch. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's always upset me. Yeah. Well, I mean, with Cuomo, this is, you know, I was actually having a discussion about this yesterday. Um, with a friend and we're talking about the issue with Cuomo and the, the nursing homes and such and you know had he have just come out after the fact even as you know earlier this week or last week when you know news started to turn on him and you know the you know, leaders of his own party are turning on him um, you look at that situation and you see a guy that all he had to do was come out and say you know what I'm sorry yeah, I didn't know that was the early days of COVID. We didn't know where this was going to go. We didn't know where the science was going to take us. So yes, it's my responsibility and it's something I'll regret for the rest of my life. Something along those lines and he would have been fine. But now he's ruined any of chances that he ever thought of getting to the Oval Office, which is exactly what he thought he was going to get. And he was going to head there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, I mean, this ruins that. I mean, he'll never be president because all, of this. All those press conferences, you know, yeah. I kept thinking, boy, this guy wants to be president. But, yeah. you know, I got to disagree that he could, he could be excused because the thing is, it wasn't that he wasn't informed. It's the fact that he knew how many were dying, but apparently yeah. he uh, was holding up the count. Yeah, well, this know, is... And, and it's amazing. Yeah. yeah, but we'll, I'll tell you what, we're going to take okay, a break yeah. and then uh, more on this because we've got plenty of time here with Kimberly Dvorak, D V O R A K, and the website is 
thekdreport.com, and I think she's streaming yep. live on uh, yeah, oh, Facebook. Facebook. Okay. <laughs> Jeff Wilder, VRN, with Kimberly Dvorak, Senior Foreign Policy Advisor for the Committee for Responsible Foreign Policy, talking about uh, Governor Andrew Cuomo over the COVID-19 cover-up. And he was uh, saying, what, what's the word here? Toxic political environment is the blame yeah. for this scandal. Yeah, uh, does of that course it is. Does include uh, Trump? Yeah, well, of course, he got an Emmy for his award-winning performance that he did all oh, yeah. of these months in front of the camera. Now at least he showed the, or highlighted uh, to the entire country that this is all orchestrated. They're actors. They have no idea what they're doing and yet they want to run the, the country. So this is, I mean, it just showed that when you, I mean, you and I, and people that, you know, are in political circles, I mean, we always talk about the dog and pony show, behind the scenes that's going on, yeah. and how they, you know, get in front of the camera and basically, you know, lie their faces off. Well, this is an example that was actually caught on on video every single day for for the most part in the last year, especially since COVID started. So he's he's front and center on this, and it shows the American people you know, how little these people know and for them to say to follow the science when clearly he didn't follow the science. I, it's just when you think about sending people who are recovering from COVID to nursing homes, I mean, yeah. I think a 10 year old would understand that that is not something that should be done. I mean, it's just that you don't put, you know, older people into a home and then bring a virus in and expect them to fight this. You know, if you're sick, your kids are sick, you don't go visit your grandparents, great grandparents while they're, you know, while you're sick. It's just, we, it's common knowledge. I mean, I, I really think. And so I think the American people are getting a good dose with this. And now with Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer and a slew of other, you know, Democrats, they just are going to run, they're running for the hills from him. I don't know if he'll make it all the way through his term, but, you know, he's, he's in a lot of hot water. And again, the cover up sometimes is worse than, you know, what he did, but because he didn't want to admit anything all the way through the election cycle, that was more important to him than the truth and, and actually saving people's lives. You know, and when you say he didn't want to admit anything, I think that also includes the fact that Trump was complying with just about everything he asked for, yep. you know, uh, filter laters and all this other stuff, even brought in the Navy ship. I have yep. a, you know, I, I just see this, you know, getting a call from Nancy Pelosi, yeah. you know, hey, we need a crisis. You know, what are you doing? You know, don't use that ship. Yeah. Okay, I won't use the ship. Yeah. Yeah. And so I that... think there was another, didn't they? Didn't they have the Army build a big uh, area also that wasn't in you, use? Yeah, they did. And they also had um, as you know, a small stadium thing that they set up an entire, you know, hospital uh -huh. wing. I mean, it was, I mean, they had, you know, like, I think, I, I can't remember the, the number, roughly like 100 people were, you know, there when they had COVID. Uh -huh. And, you know, that center was open and he was sending people back to nursing homes. I, it just, it just doesn't make any sense. And I don't know how he can get on the camera even today or tomorrow or any day in the future and not, you know, feel that guilt. And if he doesn't feel guilt for this, then, you know, he's a soulless person and, and not a very honest person. And I hope that, you know, he is going to get what he deserves at the ballot box at least. And, you know, yeah, hopefully his he, family uh, will be there. So, you know. He's, he's not confessing or admitting or no. being sorry for anything. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. It wasn't my fault. You know, and, and I mean, he's in denial. Yeah. And uh, look at him. You know, his book. Yeah. And like you say, he already got an Emmy. You know, yeah. best-selling book, an Emmy. And, yeah. and when he went on CNN, you know, boy, tell him about that. I mean, you know, talk about it's nice to have friends in low places. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, high places. Yeah. yeah. Are you talking about Don Lemon? Not Lemon, Lemon. Yeah, Lemon and his <laughs> and his brother. Yeah. Not Lamont, but yeah. the Kumos. Uh, yeah, brothers. they kick off when they go Boy. back from one show to the next one. Yeah. So, I mean, slight, you know, thing that they should be covering and acknowledging at the top of the, the news hour and say and dictate that they there may be a conflict of interest, but in, 
you know, light of our newsroom. We're going to let them handle the story, and we're not going to, you know, allow, you know, Chris Cuomo to mm-hmm. go on air and talk about it. So I, yeah. You know, well, it wasn't uh, wasn't Brennan working for CNN, or was he oh, at yeah. MSNBC? Oh, oh, yeah. You know, and here he is, you know, uh, formerly with the CIA, telling the listeners. We, they don't spy on you, Americans. Don't nobody spying on you. No, Hillary never did anything. Trust me. Yes. Yeah. And the you, FBI, you know. Yeah. It, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, great. Chris Hunter's Ray. a nice little boy. Don't yeah. worry about it. We have all the tapes on Hunter. They're just, you know, child play. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. Wow. It's just. It's. Yeah. I mean. I I think that, like I said, I mean, there's going to be a eruption in 2022, and we're going to see. A lot of establishment Republicans and Democrats fall. That's why you're seeing a lot of these people announcing that they're going to retire because they know that if they ran another election, you know, in the middle of all of this COVID stuff, which continues to completely, you know, decimate the economy. Um, and I think when you look at that situation, they're not going to, they're, they're going to, they don't care. They're going to get rid of whoever's there. And if they primary, they'll get rid of them. And so you're seeing a lot of a lot of the rhinos and that already announcing that they will not be running for re-election. They're re- retiring, spending time with the family, you know, all the usual things that they put out there. But it's you know it's telling. And I think that you know you put all of this stuff together, you know the the Hunter Biden stuff, the China stuff with Hunter and his his father and yeah, I mean you and you look at what China's doing to this country and it's just to me it's just yeah this the chickens will come home to roost for sure and I just think that you're gonna see Americans saying look we don't want to be paying for abortions in foreign countries you know what we've got families that can't put food on the table tell me where that's a, a right and and you have to do this where the law is on that front I mean, these are the things that the that the Democrats are putting into these giant bills, and they're going to be spending all of this money, not in this country, but you know they're going to be putting a lot into green energy. But then you, know, you look at the latest storm that went through Texas, and three million oh, people boy. without power. So the you know the windmills froze, and so people couldn't get power. So clearly, the alternative energy, it'll get there one day. We're just not there yet. And I think that when you see things like this and you see the regulations that they're going to start slapping on people, kind of like re- remember the light bulb situation where you, you know, they were phasing out the, the light bulb and you had to buy this big special light bulb and everybody, oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, those are the kind of regulations. They come up, things. yeah, yeah. With this, uh, pushing this new green deal and uh, anybody that studies it knows basically it's just so that uh, there'll be more millionaires. Yeah. And, all of this stuff with the electric cars, I think it was uh, somebody on uh, Carson Tucker show. Uh, yeah, it, it, they were talking about all the stuff for the batteries is going to be made in China. Yeah. And they're going to be, you know, using all the non-new green stuff to make all the batteries and stuff. Oh, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah, and we can get into that a little bit, too, in a minute. But, you know, let me tell the listeners in your uh, report you talk about Anderson Cooper, okay? Talk about the fake news. And whenever it goes back to Como, he addressed the scandal on a Monday night for roughly five minutes. MSNBC, you say, completely avoided the subject throughout its primetime lineup. NBC Nightly News, 1 minute 37 seconds. ABC World Press, 33 seconds. And CBS Evening News, 25 seconds. You know what? Trump could have hiccuped during an opera, yeah, and get more. And it would have been worth forty-five minutes of reporting from yeah. every single network. Yeah, no, I know. Well, I get you know. It's, again, it's their their party, so they don't want to rock the boat. But the the scandal's out. I think what you're seeing with leadership in the Democrat Party right now, kind of fleeing from him because they want to get him out of the way in the story behind them before the twenty-two elections, the midterms. Because if that story's still lingering about then that's going to, you know, that's going to hurt them at the ballot box because people, I mean, you, you look at the mistakes that he made on a daily basis. And again, I, I say this repeatedly, go watch the video. It's, in the, it's a, an apparently an Emmy award winning performance that killed thousands of people. And we're celebrating him as, or, you know, 
the Democrats and are they're elevating him and saying, yeah, he's the the best thing since sliced bread. But yeah, I mean, the the guy was responsible for for kill, you know the deaths of so many people. And I mean, and if, again, if this was Trump, man, this would be like worse than the Nazis. And in an essence, I mean, you can look at that and with the stroke of a pen. That's what Cuomo did to thousands of people in New York. He did that. He sentenced them by doing that. And, you know, it, there needs to be some sort of legal remedy. And obviously the families that lost loved ones, there's probably going to be a large class action lawsuit against the state, of course. So the state of you know, New, New York will have to pick up the tab for that. But that's on its way because now we're starting to see some of the, uh, you know, the evidence in the, the FOIAs that you know journalists and others have requested and so now they actually have the figures they know how they covered it up why they covered up and you know it's 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 not going to end well for Cuomo and as we spoke in the last block he wanted to be president and he will never be president because of this but anyways yeah it's it's tragic for sure now when when he started his whole you know report every single morning every single morning you know, and I kept thinking, wow, I mean, I know that, you know, Trump is trying to, you know, get his team together there and talk about it, but but Como was like, you know, I, I got to outdo him. And I, I swear, Kimberly, whenever I would watch just parts of it, I kept thinking to myself, I wonder if he has more mirrors out there so that he can see himself and he has cameras. Yeah. I, that ego was just unbelievable. Yeah, yeah no shame. There, I mean, he, he, and clearly, I love you know, <laughs> hypocritical doesn't even begin to explain you know what he's uh -huh. you know coming under scrutiny for, and he's going to remain under scrutiny because you know once you lose the the leadership of your own party, then it's pretty much over. And I just, for the life of me, I still cannot believe he hasn't even offered a I'm sorry to the families. Nothing. He's offered oh, yeah, nothing, no, and he's doubled down on this. Like, yeah, well, you know, yeah. saying that the CDC recommended this, and then, you know, a couple or uh, two months ago or so, he was saying that Trump ordered him to do this. So, I mean, he's a liar, which a lot of, or probably most politicians, I can go on and say, you know, they they do, and um, it's it's very sad to see that the media just didn't pick up on this earlier, and. Um, Sadly, again, all these families that lost their loved ones, they, they deserved a lot more from a governor, and they didn't have those issues in California and Florida and Texas and, and other states. They didn't have those issues. So, you know, even if this was just coming out and he did it for the month of March or something, he could have, like, said, you know what, I'm ripping up this thing. It's not really working out with the nursing home thing, and we need to kind of, you know, protect that uh, community a lot, you know, a lot more. But he didn't. He continued to go down this road because of the election. I believe because yeah. of the election. And that's sad. How many lives were lost? So this man could help the Democrat Party, you know, grab more more power. And yeah, this he, he's on you know display every single day and saying nothing about all of this, knowing what's going on behind the scenes, yeah, but, you know, yeah, playing it yeah. off like, hey, I'm doing a good thing. I'm I'm a cool guy and, you know, look at me and yeah, well, my brother and I, we always chit chat. You know, I mean, it, it just, it's not a good look whatsoever. Yeah, even when they were talking about coronavirus, I didn't watch the original, but they've shown it so many times, you know, yeah. and uh, he had his brother on talking about, you know, when he got tested for coronavirus, and here's the swab they used on him, and he pulls out a gigantic swab, and they laugh for, you know, five minutes. Yeah. And boy, this is funny. Oh, yeah. uh, you know, the Democrats should, uh, what they should do is practice and try to, you know, just not a real thing, but just try to impeach Como. There you yeah, go. you know, just to get the practice, you know. Yeah, they got to keep their, they, they they got, yeah, they've got a winning streak going right now, so they got to keep that up. <laughs> Hey, listen, I know there's some other stuff that we we're going to talk about. Uh, there's the relief bill that's coming out. Yeah. Uh, and you were talking about uh, uh, a thing here that you wrote. If the party does not win any support from Republicans skeptical of more spending, every Democrat in the Senate will have to get on board for this bill to pass. Uh, and this is a COVID-19 <clears throat> vaccine bill. Yep. It's about uh, it's $1.9 trillion, you know. Mind you, we're getting close to thirty trillion in debt, um, and it's you know it's a free for all giveaway 
to states like California, New York, Illinois, and a number of others that have completely mismanaged their funds, are operating in the red because they don't have any money. They shut down the economy because of COVID, so they have no tax revenue coming in. And you're, you know, you're looking at this and saying, okay, so you guys mismanaged and other states did well, but we're going to bail you out again. And we still haven't even spent all the money from the prior COVID bill that's out there. But this is just an, in, you know, this is another way to add green jobs or, you know, so to speak jobs, because they've thrown some language about the, you know, climate change issue in there. So they're going to be, you know, you know, giving family and friends who have businesses that are in that field, they'll get all kinds of contracts thrown their way. That's where a lot of this money goes, which is sad. Well, I'll tell you, uh, I had a story today as we get ready to go on this break. Uh, at least $63 billion of the $630 billion in disbursements was misspent in the CARES Act bill. Uh, mm-hmm. CARES Act, yeah. Yep. The Corona Aid Relief Economic Security, three six hundred and thirty billion dollars. Wow. Yep. Okay, we're going to continue in just a moment. Wrap things up with Kimberly Dvorak, D V O R A K, uh, streaming live on Facebook, and you'll also find it a little bit later on on her website, thekdreport.com. We'll be right back. We're in Jeff Wilder with Kimberly Dvorak, D V O R A K, Senior Foreign Policy Advisor for the Committee for Responsible Foreign Policy. Uh, I didn't know if you, what you want to end up with, but uh, I know you did talk about this uh, uh, house plan that's going to challenge. Yeah, be a challenge for I think it's actually I think it's fitting to end the end the segment with talking about Rush Limbaugh, who passed away today after a, a battle with cancer. And you know, I, you know, you being in the radio business for a long time, know that he was, you know, he's going to be missed, and that he's, um, you know, put thing, you know, put ideas and thoughts in, in place for future generations to take and run with. Um, he was a huge, obviously, Trump supporter, and you know, really, you know, I listened to some of the presidents. Uh, he was on Fox talking about Rush. Uh, this morning, and you know, he was just talking about how he encouraged Trump to actually, you know, continue to follow through with, you know, building the wall, or, or they would, you know, talk all the time about policy issues, and, and he said that he never really knew, you know, Rush before he was president. They just didn't travel in the same circles, and yet they formed a, a unique bond that, you know, left the pre, you know, former president, uh, Trump. Uh, you know, kind of sad. I mean, he, he was genuinely, you know, sad about what what had happened and, yeah. and what a great man he was and a patriot for this country. Well, you know, and, and it's patriots, you know, whenever they pass away. It's terrible if you lose anyone. Yeah. You know, you could have the worst person in the world, a guy you just couldn't stand, but, you know, you kind of hate for anyone to have to pass on. And then if they're really bad, you figure they're going the other way. Yeah. So that doesn't help. So, yeah, yeah. But, uh, yeah, you know, in Rush, uh, you know, and I worked with a guy that was considered, you know, a legend, and that was George Putnam. Mm-hmm. And uh, then you had, you had Mort Saul. You had a lot of, a lot yeah. of people that were getting to going, but no one ever had the, the, as much exposure as Rush Limbaugh did. You know, they would yeah. have a Johnny Carson, maybe, you know, or somebody like yeah. that on TV. Yeah. Uh, but yeah. I was always, uh, I was, uh, you know, I'd listen to Rush when I'm driving in to, do my other stuff, <laughs> you know, and uh, it was always interesting because he would come up with stuff and you'd say to yourself, gee, you know, I, I never looked at it that way, or yeah, yeah you're absolutely right, you know, yeah. that that is one of the problems right yeah. there, and every, right in front of our face when we never saw it. Yeah, and so, he also, I, I mean, when he was, that. when he got something wrong, you know, he, he was always quick to say, you know what, you know, I, I misspoke there, I didn't quite have all the facts right in front of me. He wasn't afraid to, you know, admit that, you know, when you're working in, in the news industry, especially breaking news, I mean, you go on and you report some things, and then you have to clarify later because, you know, it's, you know, breaking and unfolding in real time. So, I mean, he was always, you know, coming back and he would he would acknowledge that. He didn't, I mean, I think a lot of people on the left think he was a huge ego, 
But I think at the end, he was, you know, very humbled by the experience, and he got the, you know, the Medal of Honor, Medal, Medal of Freedom yeah. award from President Trump at the his last uh, State of the Union address, and it just, you know, when you, again, you look at some someone like Rush, he was like, he was the pioneer in all of this, and there will never be another Rush, and so far we haven't really seen anybody, except for you, of course, that can step oh, up yeah, and, yeah, and yeah. take the mic and, and do what uh, Rush was so, you know, able to do for three hours every day. You know, he, you know, he was, yeah. just, it, I, the energy that he had, and, um, you know, the, the prep that goes into, you know, talking for you know, three hours, more or less. Um, it, it's, yeah, it was amazing. Yeah, yeah, very, very. Great words, Kimberly. Uh, so we'll be back on our regular schedule, I guess, uh, for Monday. next Monday, right? Yep. All right. Okay. Thank you very much. All right. Kimberly Have Dvorak. a good day.